Hello and welcome to this MD80 and Candle Motion Modes guide. In our previous videos you've seen how to set up the hardware, run some examples and configure the actuators with MD2. Today we'd like to dive a little bit deeper into the motion control modes available in MD80 controllers. In this tutorial we'll be using a single AX8108 actuator with a candle connected to the PC. Generally, there are three different motion modes available. Impedance mode, velocity PID mode and position PID mode. Each mode has a different application. The impedance mode is usually used when you want to control the position and velocity of the motor shaft and at the same time have a certain level of compliance for force feedback purposes. The main applications are walking robots, cobots and telepresence devices. The velocity mode can be used when you want to keep a set point output shaft velocity with no constraints on the position. This mode is most commonly used in wheeled robots. Finally, the position mode is used when you want to control the position and velocity with high precision, most commonly without the force feedback. This control mode is usually used in robotic arms and gimbals. Let's start with the impedance motion mode. In this mode the actuator acts like a spring damper system with tunable coefficients. It's commonly used in compliant applications where you mostly care about the force exerted by the actuators more than precision positioning. This mode also has the option to fit forward torque by passing the impedance controller. It's a very simple yet powerful and versatile controller used in many robotic applications such as walking robots and collaborative robotic arms. The controller expects two targets, the position and velocity target. Usually the velocity target is set to zero as it can influence the steady state position. However, you may find it useful when a more advanced trajectory is needed with a predefined velocity profile between the respective points. The torque controller visible on the diagram is factory tuned and thus we won't describe it in this video. You can assume it does its best to keep the set point torque on the motor's output and it is executed with much higher frequency than controllers we talk about in this tutorial. The impedance controller is the easiest one to tune as it has only two parameters, Kp which is an equivalent of physical spring coefficient and Kd which is an equivalent to the damping coefficient. We've prepared a simple demonstration script in which we can easily change Kp and Kd gains and print motor's position, velocity and torque. Please note that the gains are actuator specific and dependent on many factors like gearbox ratio, rotor inertia or supply voltage so you may have to tune them yourself in your custom application. Let's see the motor response when high Kp is used with little Kd. For now we will set the target position to 0 radians and target velocity to 0 radians per second. The response has a lot of oscillations and it looks unstable. To make it more damped, let's increase the damping coefficient. Now the target position was reached with very little overshoot compared to the previous example. We can damp the response even more. Or we can even set Kp to zero. Using only the damping coefficient is possible, however due to velocity measurement noise the motor can go unstable when Kd is set to a high value. As you can see the motor opposes any changes in position. With Kp equal to zero the motor is not trying to maintain target position. However if we set the velocity target to a non-zero value the motor will try to maintain that velocity. This may be useful when you want to keep a certain velocity between the respective position points. It is also possible to fit forward the torque set point omitting the impedance controller. To enter the raw torque mode we need to set the Kp and Kd to zero and instead of commanding target position, command target torque. As you would expect, without the load the motor is going to spin as fast as it can given the supply voltage limit. However, if you load the motor it's not going to apply more torque than we have commanded. 
The velocity mode integrates a single PID controller which takes target velocity as input and outputs torque needed to sustain that velocity. There are five parameters that affect the motor response. Proportional gain, integral gain, derivative gain, integral windup, and max torque. The first four parameters are regular PID controller gains, whereas the max torque simply limits the maximum torque the motor can output. Let's see an example of velocity mode usage. The PID gains are already tuned and we will be changing the max torque parameter. The target velocity is set to 5 radians per second and maximum torque is set to 0.8 Nm. The motor is spinning with the set point velocity and as you can see it is relatively hard to stop it. If we decrease the maximum torque to 0.1 Nm the motor behavior without the load will not change. But as you can see it requires much less torque to stop. This parameter can be used as a great safety feature. The last motion mode described in this tutorial is the position PID mode. It is composed of two PID controllers, the position and velocity controller. The position controller's input is the desired position and it outputs the target velocity needed to reach that position. The velocity controller tries to keep the target velocity by outputting the target motor torque. The cascaded controller architecture may seem complicated at first, however it allows for more advanced motion control like reaching a position with a predefined maximum velocity and torque. For tuning purposes, be sure to always tune the velocity controller first. During adjusting the gains to your needs, you'll find out that besides the PID controller gains, there are two more parameters, namely the max velocity and max torque. These parameters allow for limiting both controller outputs. With max velocity, you can limit the velocity of the shaft between the respective position points, and with max torque, the maximum torque that can be applied to reach that position. Now let us present a few examples of position PID mode. The controllers are already tuned and we'll be changing the max velocity and max torque parameters. First, let's see how the motor behaves when max velocity and max torque are set to a high value. As you can see, the motor acts aggressively and holds the target position very strongly. Now, let's modify the max velocity parameter to a lower value. Now the motor moves much slower, but still the target position is held very strongly. In the end we can modify the max torque parameter. Now the motor moves slowly and can be easily put out of the set point position. This was the last example for this video. If you'd like to read more about the MDAT controller, candle or motion modes in detail, be sure to check out the manual on our website, our GitHub repo and stay tuned for next videos. Goodbye.